welcome to the Take 5 Podcast. We are back once again in t- audio format. We have transitioned from the video world of YouTube to your eardrums. And here we are. Uh, we have reassembled the team in 2015. I'll just go around the table real quick and kind of reintroduce everyone. Um, to my left and going around, uh, we have Taryn Sherwood, formerly known as the Cameraman, is now an official member of the panel. Did it! Did Successful. It. Beat, beat all the competition to get here. <laughs> Next to him is Corey the Lionfire Williams. Hi. Next to him is our newest member of Take 5. That is my brother, Isaac. You, you can't see me, but you can hear me. Just imagine me there with you. Nick's mom made us put him on the show. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> and next I, to I, him I, I, is I uh, Tommy Williamson. Yeah, I, I, I have a bit of a concern about uh, letting this guy on the panel when I, did, I had no say. I, who Who is this guy? He's my brother, Isaac. No, yeah, no, no, no Isaac. not him, the other one. Uh, oh. Taryn, well, we, me and Corey are technically the creator, or the owners uh, yeah, of the yeah, Take well, 5. I, I, mean, I bought Tanner's share. Yeah, he, he did. He's actually uh, wait, one of the original dead. three now. His <laughs> share was up for sale, and you it, didn't tell me. It, 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 Nick, no. we live together. That, that's something you could have told me. It was on eBay. It was. <laughs> There was a month gone by. Well, that that is like unfair. And the buy it now price was literally. $2. $2. I'm calling <laughs> shenanigans on that. <laughs> but anyway, um, once again, just so everybody kind of understands, you know, we used to be more of a video oriented uh, show, and now we're jumping into the world of podcasts so that we can have uh, discussions that are further in depth uh, about different things, not just about movies like we have in the past, but we also talk about just different things that interest us. Um, it can range from video games to movies to, uh, I mean, just really anything, comic books, just whatever kind of pops into our head at the day that we come in here and decide to uh, discuss things. But uh, mainly since, you know, it's 2015 now, we're kind of wrapping up, finally putting the nail in the coffin on 2014. Uh, we've all had a moment, a week or so, to kind of reflect and think about, okay, what was... The better moments, the worst moments, what were our favorites of things, and uh, we decided that we wanted to kind of go around the table and discuss what our favorite movies of 2014 were. And so I'll just kind of get started, and I'll start with you, Taryn. Um, just go right ahead. Wait and a minute, you guys got a week? I, I had like 10 minutes before we got here to think about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know where he's saying it's a week anchor. either. It's, it's like, I asked him at the house like it's, two okay. hours it's ago. Ele- it's, it's January 11th. You've had like 10, 11 days to think about kind of think about your movie like no 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 it was like two hours ago at the house i said hey nick what are we going to talk about you said oh i don't know we'll talk about it when we get there I'm like oh okay i didn't have so, like prep, and, preparation and that was a lie i <laughs> make us sound more professional yeah. i was sitting in this chair as you were typing up the topics on your laptop that we can probably hear there's no loyalty in take five <laughs> i'm here low we're, we're just trying to keep nick from lying to you yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dear listener nick is a liar Parts is yeah. propaganda. How dare I try to make us sound professional? <laughs> All right, take, All right five, anyway. take five is one fifth loyalty, four fifths honesty at this point. Just tell me, what are the five T's of Take Five? That's, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> one of them's gone, and no one saw that movie. <laughs> yeah, so that was an obscure reference to yeah. one of the worst movies of 2014. Which oh. we'll you take that back. We'll, we'll Corey. get you later. Right okay. now, we're on best anyway, of 2014. Taryn, what do you think? All right. Um, I don't know if I would say it was, like, the best because everyone has, like, their own criteria, but my favorite movie of 2014 uh, was by far Guardians of the Galaxy. Just a good, solid, fun film. Like, it was lighthearted and dramatic. Mm -hmm. It just, it was one of those movies that it didn't take itself too seriously. Right, yeah. But in the parts of it that were dramatic, you could definitely feel like there were some stakes involved for this cinematic universe and considering it's a universe that we all kind of care about since it's marvel it it was definitely just it was a breath of fresh air from like the tension of captain america Mm -hmm. and thor and iron man who have been you know ptsd since the avengers movies yeah and it's it's definitely a current trend you know i mean not five years ago the superhero genre was very serious very dark and everything was about the reboot and making it more realistic and what the Marvel movies have kind of done has int- reintroduced this idea that, uh, hey, it's okay to make a joke here or there. Mm-hmm. It's okay. We're, it's superhero movies, guys. We can we can be, have fun. And I think that Guardians best represents that mindset. And so I just think that the, 
that people really latched onto it because of that. Well, Nick, we have to be concerned about being too lighthearted in these movies, though, okay. because it, it's okay to make a joke occasionally. And one of the things that I didn't didn't like about Guardians of the Galaxy was I definitely felt like there was an overabundance of humor in it. Mm-hmm. And you see, whenever we, you know, have that much comedy in a superhero movie, that's when we end up with bat nipples. Okay, <laughs> so we need to definitely keep it in check. Okay. But we there don't was want a too Schumacher. Much. Right. Marvel, right, right, right. right. You know. there, there was too I, much comedy. I felt. Okay. I don't think that. I feel like. I don't feel like there was too much comedy in Guardians. I feel like the difference between Guardians and Bat Nipples is that there was a certain level of camp in the later of the Burton esque mm-hmm. Batman films. Um, but I feel like with Marvel, it was like after like Iron Man three makes jokes, but they're in between Tony Stark crying after I almost died. And there's jokes in Thor The Dark World, but it's after, oh, why did my brother betray me, and mm-hmm. why is my brother now I think, dead? I think of all the Marvel movies, the one that was had some tonal issues and balancing issues was the se- sequel to Thor. Because, you know, we're, you know, a, a movie, a, a C-list, D-list comic book group called The Guardians, they can take risks like that. They yeah. can say, we're going to make this more of a wink at the audience type of movie. That you know we're not taking ourselves super seriously about this because you don't even know who these people are yet. And then with the other ones, it's been you know they they've leaned more serious. Iron Man's been more serious. Captain America probably was th- is the most serious of them all. Um, but you know Thor, it, they just kept it. It was almost like that ridiculous Monty Python British humor sometimes. Like with the you know, and we've discussed this you know before at, on our own once we went to watch the movie. It was the assistant's assistant thing. It's like, what was there? There are characters there that just had no point of being there, jokes that have no point of being there, and yeah. it, you it, lose... Most of the movie was just like, you know, for fangirls of Loki right. to yeah. swoon over. It was oh. a Loki fangirl movie. But it's definitely, you definitely have to find that balance between... Um, bat nipples. Bat and nipples or, and you know, growling Dark Batman. Knight, yeah. So, yeah. you know. Between bat nipples and Dark Knight, that's kind of the gradient. Why thing. do I have nipples? <laughs> yeah, that's a... That would have been a great. I'm not, I'm not the only person that did not have a problem with Christian Bale. With Christian Bale. I, I, I don't either. It's just that it's been it. pop it, culture world. They yeah. they just ran with it, and you're like, well, they don't. Not everyone understands that that's him disguising his voice yeah. and using it as an intimidation factor. But anyway, Guardians was a good movie. I liked it. Yeah. I didn't like it as much as everyone because I saw it way late. Okay. Like, I saw it way out, so it had been pretty hype. Yeah. Uh, mm. To the point where everybody's saying like. Batista had his break. I'm I'm the wrestling guy, yeah. by the way, so this mattered to me. Like, but B- Batista had his breakout performance as Drax, and he's gonna be the next Rock. And I was like, I don't. It was kind of a pretty cut and dry. Like you're a big muscular guy. Yeah. Anyone yeah. could have done that if you were huh. huge, in my I opinion. I think he did it well. Yeah, he did it. Is but still, one like he did. It didn't stretch any acting ability as far as I was you concerned. You didn't go away like going, wow, maybe maybe yeah. Batista has a Ooh, career in this yeah. film I really. Business. I mean, I know he's got cast in like mm-hmm. James Bond twenty whatever. Ever we're on, yeah. But like, so I mean, things are happening for him, I guess. But 24? it's like twenty four, twenty six. It's one of those two. Um, but my biggest problem with it, which I think most people loved, was Rocket Raccoon. I swear to everything that's Jason Alexander <laughs> and not Bradley Cooper. I call bullcrap. <laughs> and the fact that Bradley Cooper's like saying his he took, well he took. Uh, influence from somewhere else, like it was like Joe Pesci from Goodfellas or something. That's where I got the voice. I was like, you give Jason Alexander credit. <laughs> you took that from Duckman, <laughs> and that bugs me. That the, the voice bugged me the whole okay. time because th- so that 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 ate at me in a weird way. But it was a good movie. It was lighthearted, and I guess I don't know. Uh, what was your favorite movie of 2014? Mine. Yes. Yeah. Yours. Into the Woods. Into the Woods. Okay. Good. Yeah. Tell, us hmm? Tell us why. Choice. Tell us why. Uh, I, it could be just a product of I saw it way later. I didn't see a lot of the big budget movies this year because I didn't have interest in Michael Bay's franchise. Corey films, was busy running a business while the rest of us would go watch movies this Without summer. Me. So, so therefore, yeah, so I, I missed a lot of the big movies. Um, <laughs> There's uh, every time I would say, "Hey, we should we should take Corey," but no one was like, "Yeah, we should totally get him." Yeah, I'm lucky to be here, apparently. Um, so. Uh, no, I liked Into the Woods. Uh, I enjoyed, um, I think the director did a really good job in terms of taking a Broadway musical and not overdoing it for film. It was definitely, it felt very much like the 
it was still a play. Yeah, obviously they got to do, you, you know, and take a play and you put it on film, you can do way more. Like, it's like, ooh, now the, we're not bound by, you know, physics and, you know, like, having to actually be on a stage and confined area. Mm-hmm. But I think, like, he took advantage of that in a really positive way. For one, it's all, phys- it's mostly it's physical sets. It's not, like, a bunch of actors acting on green screen all the time. They, mm-hmm. like, filmed a lot in England. They were actually at some castles. They built huge, huge, like, sound stages, I think, like, physical sets and things like that. So I thought that was cool. Let the actors actually react with what they're on, like a stage play. And it was a small budget, so, again, it was a guy proving that you don't have to have 200-something million dollars mm-hmm. to make a really cool film. It was interesting because when we went to watch it over the Christmas break, you know, we had so many friends on social media that talked about how... I, and I think a lot of this was due to the marketing of the film. They didn't know it was a musical walking in. And a lot of them were disgruntled by it and, or the length of the play. And what they don't understand is that Into the Woods is very much a uh, commentary on fantasy and fairy tale stories. And that it's, I mean, not trying to give the, the end away, but there's a twist at the end that it's not your average fairy tale ending. Yeah. And with a twist. It's with a twist. Uh-huh. But, uh,. And I think that, that disrupted them because they were getting to what they thought was the end and it's like, nope, we're going to flip the script on you. And then they're like, oh, there's another 30 minutes. And it is a long play and it's pr- and for film goers, it's probably a long movie. Oh, and yeah. That's probably what upset them for the most part. But um, me having been a part of that play a couple times in different roles, I felt, I was almost hoping that they would kind of expand a little bit. Yeah. So I was, I'm kind of coming at it from the other side where I was like, you know, it would have been nice to see a little bit more, um, I guess, you know, like you talked about earlier about, you know, when Jack is singing about the giants in the sky, yeah. it's like, well, I would have, it would have been nice to see a little bit more about that or more of it rather than him going up and coming down because you, because on the Broadway version, you don't see that. And yeah. so uh, you, I guess the part of you that's seen that play would kind of hope for that, especially expectations of <laughs> this Disney big budget movie, but you know, as you had discussed earlier, you know, it's it was actually a lower budgeted movie in comparison to a lot of big releases. Yeah. I, I liked that that, that that he didn't do that. I yeah. like that. As a director, he didn't go, oh, so we're with Disney. I could ask for millions of extra dollars. We can actually do scenes up in the Giants mm-hmm. and stuff like that. How much, I'm glad how much that, was the budget? I think it's like 50 million bucks, okay. which is pretty modest for a Disney yeah. high budget thing. That's like an ensemble cast. Mm-hmm. That and includes Depp and Street, right. of all people. And that probably went into being able to afford them <laughs> yeah. for the play. And I think the other thing, when you don't focus, it probably would have been easy to go, oh, well, we need the big action set piece where he steals the golden coins from the giant, the giant chases him. But instead, I guess the director chose to focus more on the uh, performances. Yeah, so. and, I, and I, I, think, I think that was a good idea. Yeah, I think it was cool to like have your imagination have to be like, oh, I have to envision what happened up there. I have mm-hmm. to envision, you know, mm-hmm. where Jack went and stuff like that. I mean, you get to see the Giants essentially a little mm-hmm. bit, not much, but so. um, they keep it very uh, down. And I'll say this about the movie. Two best child actor performers I've seen in a really long time. Yeah, like, I'll give you that. It didn't make me groan every time they were on. They actually almost stole the movie for yeah. me. Like I'm, every time the Jack and Little, Little Red Riding, Riding Hood, I was like, these are talented kids, and I enjoy their performances. Yeah. And then, possibly the best ensemble cast I've ever seen in an ensemble movie. Okay. I think it's just perfectly cast. I don't, I wouldn't change any of it. I I do want to give special note in this movie that. Chris Pine finally oh, went full no. Shatner, oh. and it wasn't in a Star Trek film, they, they and it worked go. beautifully. I, I think Chris Pine stole the movie, in my opinion, as he one of the princes. Well. It was a very over-the-top, overly dramatic, him and his brother Prince are trying to... Wait, out, out. Prince the singer? Or? No, 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 like no. a actual, his brother who was also Wheels. a prince. Oh, okay, well, that's so, just yeah. the way you Sorry. ordered it. It was Sorry. like his brother Prince, you know. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> <Chris, maybe. laughs> but, uh, but, though, they have this... Uh, they're trying to outdo one another with, oh, my life's so bad. No, no, my life's worse. But it's like Taryn said, it's like the director went to him and said, okay, remember everything they told you not to do as Captain Kirk and Star Trek? Do that. Time seven. Embrace and it. Embrace it. <laughs> so. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Here's my question, and this is just for Nick because he's been in the play. Um, I, I, I never was in this particular play. Um in the movie, and I won't try to give it away, I'll try to use wrestling terms. Okay. Um, the Prince heel turn, is that like supposed to be a surprise? 
Yes. Because I would, like, when that happened, the heel, I was like, oh my gosh! <laughs> because cause the play is divided into two halves, essentially. There's yeah. the happy ending, which is the first act. And sometimes mm-hmm. they'll do it for high schools and you know, younger audiences, just the first end act. It, and end it. And we're okay. good. Everything, everything's hunky-dory. But the second act is where a lot of those um, more everything mature, everything just goes crazy. The adult themes come in. Not adult themes as in things that you shouldn't watch as a kid, but just mature subject matter. Yeah. And so, mommy, mommy, why is the prince, you know, messing around? Right. Yeah. <laughs> things that, you know, are, are going to bring up those kind of questions and stuff. But yeah, it was, it's definitely, it comes as a surprise. And I think it's because they split it. You, you, in, in the movie, it was more of a quick turn. Yeah. And so, well, which I, mean, I saw this movie with some small children and they were like, what? What, what happened? And I was like, well, listen. Disney messed up a lot of the fairy tales. <laughs> <laughs> Disney, <laughs> there's the fairy tales that are prior to Disney. Cinderella, they're they end a little Although, more violently. The <laughs> fact that Into the Woods kept like the original. Yeah, like, they actually go grim fairy tales. Yeah, like, like they go full on eyes pecking, like, like birds yeah, pecking off, eyes, things. chopping off parts of the foot to yeah, get in the glass yeah, slipper they, they or gold in this one. Mm-hmm. And that's not spoilers if you haven't read that. Then like yeah, like it's a childhood. it's a hundred year old. Hundreds of years yeah, old. You've had, you've had, <laughs> you've had your plenty whole of life time to read this. <laughs> yeah. You've had plenty of time to read the original Russian Cinderella. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, Isaac, give the, me your favorite movie of 2014. This is definitely John Wick. John Wick. John Wick. Ooh, the Keanu really, Reeves. I really enjoyed it because I went there expecting, okay, it's going to be Keanu Reeves like killing a bunch of bad guys. Which this is a great movie. Is a, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and that you is exactly greatness. what I got. You were disappointed. <laughs> And it was it was that and beyond because like they just built him up so much as this unstoppable killing machine. Because he is. And like you like if you'd watch it and like the way he killed like sometimes you think this could be a little outrageous like he's that good but mm-hmm. it's like I like it though. But he yeah. sold that, it. He, he, he did sell. He did sell it. it really well. What what I enjoyed about it was that. It wasn't. It was actually a smart action movie. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, wasn't, it wasn't just your stupid old guns blazing, killing everybody. It like they made some. They kind of did some changes within, you know, the typical uh, cliche character types. You know, he had the Russian the bad, like bad the guy, father. but he wasn't. He wasn't just the brooding, ha ha ha, I'm evil. Like he actually was like trying to work with Keanu yeah. Reeves, being like, look, man, let's just. Let's just not. Let's just. I, <laughs> just I felt like my son's the, an idiot. All the characters, other than Keanu Reeves in the movie, were like really interesting. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't get into them a lot, and exp- like there's like zero backstory. But mm-hmm. it was all characters that you were like, I would want to know more about. Them. Right. Like the black dude in the hotel. Mm-hmm. I forgot what his name was. The hotel manager, and that, essentially. The, but the girl who like tries to kill John Wick mm-hmm. like two times, I think. Yeah. And then. I love that William Defoe was in it because I yeah, don't know yeah. that. And anytime he's in something and I don't know it, Willem. Willem. Oh, that's my bad. My bad. Willem. Tommy's Defoe. correcting Isaac. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. quietly. Willem Shaking Defoe. Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. That's not really spoilers. That's not really, spoiler, cause not really because he's, he's in it. Is he cast? I just know that yeah. right now we're in this weird trend of Hollywood where we like keep yeah, really big names you. under wraps. Yeah, it um, wasn't a surprise. Which oh. is what they should have done with Depp in Into the yeah, Woods. They yeah. Instead yeah. of like high profiling mm-hmm. a four minute part. Yeah. They should have like it should have just been a surprise. Right. Oh, you oh, you mean like Kevin Spacey in Seven? Oh wait, sorry, spoilers. It's been like fifteen years. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> we're past. The, we're we're outside yeah. of the. We're almost twenty. The probably. bounds of law. Yeah, yeah about uh, almost twenty almost years. Twenty. Wow. Almost 20. Time flies. I but, felt. I just felt like it's just solid. Because with movie. Keanu, I mean, everybody likes Keanu. He's just yeah. he's just okay, one of those people. False. Who, everyone hates Keanu. Everyone and I'm that, sick of it. Everyone, everyone that, that has good really, taste. Everyone that has good taste, or just <laughs> everyone that's honest with themselves, you can't yeah. hate Keanu. It's true. You might. Okay, so maybe he's not the most. Depth wise, great actor, he's but he's char- he's a charismatic in a way that we all enjoy him on screen. It's not it's not like a I mean get, like an example of an actor that's just there constantly, and you're like, why does this guy keep getting movies? He I, got miscasted once in Dracula, yeah, and it's haunted him ever since. Pretty much. I just I want to know like because when I think of Keanu Reeves, there's two different Keanu Reeves I think of. Okay. There's Matrix and post Matrix Keanu Reeves, where you know it's very much how we know him now. Where he's, awesome. he's very serious, he's awesome as an actor. Badass. 
but we have to address that there is a Bill and Ted Keanu Reeves, mm-hmm. and we haven't seen <laughs> and that. And we love Ke- him. And we love him, but we haven't seen him in a long time. Well, he's coming back with Bill and Ted 3. Good. I want to see that. I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about either version of Keanu Reeves. I just want to see more of a balance, because I... Bill and Ted, Keanu Reeves was really awesome. So, like, maybe a comedic take on him. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It might be a good return to comedy. Yeah. If you've never seen the movie Parenthood, which is what the stupid show now is based off of, it's one of Keanu's best performances. And it's, it's, it's a Ted. Okay. Essentially, he was filming them around the same time. Okay. So it's essentially Ted. Got but it. it's got a lot of heart in it. I do. Okay. I want to point out, I thought it was like unique the way he used his weapons. It was like really close to, you can't see me, but he would like hold it really close to his chest and get like all these headshots from like hip fire. And it was like, how is he doing that? It was, I thought and it was, it was cool. It was also one of those action heroes that didn't just do the right thing necessarily. Like yeah. when he's he breaks into the base where the son who's killed his dog is at, and he's taking out no, all his, his goons son. and it's the Russian bad the guy Russian son. bad guy son, and he's got one of the goons like on the ground with a gun to the head, and he's just staring <laughs> at so the great. guy from across the way. And instead of just going after the guy, he shoots the bodyguard, <laughs> yes. and he's like, "Yeah, you're next." <laughs> like, and it's like Die Hard, greatest action movie ever. It's the template for. Action films. Tommy's, it's Tommy's just, analyzing this. Oh, hold on. I mean, <laughs> Die Hard is one of the best, but I don't know if it is the best. I, in it's my opinion, pretty, it's saw, the best. It's an epitome. It, it's it's, just, just, it's very just the great strong. classic template of someone overcoming the odds yeah. to beat some big, fo- like evil like, force, like great. They made, but I don't know. Every once in a while, you have to have a John Wick. You have to have the movie where the villains just absolute fear. This dude, <laughs> it, it, it was this year's it was, Taken. It was the, it's just like the Taken one. Yeah. Everyone loved it because mm-hmm. you watched Liam Neeson rock yeah, for two right. straight hours and exactly. never really like struggled much. Like there was a, maybe one, and that's John Wick. It's like he struggled, maybe like he tripped a little bit in there, but for the most part, every bad guy fear it was hell was coming with John Wick. There well, was just, there was that scene where it's the because the Russian mobs guy he's like his son punches the like chop 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 dealers yeah. in the face and uh it's john Leguizamo. Him, yeah. yeah he calls him on the f- uh, the phone the russian mob leader or the no he calls the guy at the chop shop and the mob he's like, the mob boss calls I'm sorry, I'm sorry. the mob boss it's calls john, to the man, point. hold on hold on, hold on. <laughs> i got it i got it the mob boss calls john Leguizamo at the chop shop and is like why did you punch my son and he's all his his only response is because he stole John Wick's car, and then his dead and silence, and the mob boss is like, it's "Oh," just... <laughs> and he hangs up the phone. Yeah, so it, it's it's just every once in a while you gotta have this movie that's like just the action star Superman that's like just makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was definitely a nice uh, change of pace from action movies that have come out recently. I like the like I didn't know what the coins were that he used. Like he coins. had these coins that he gave to. People. Like he gave it to the guy that cleaned up the bodies. He it was like in his it's house. supposed to be hitman currency. Yeah, he just said, yeah. Oh. It was like it's currency cool. it's like only, Russian gold that's or only something. Only used by hitmen. Yeah, didn't know what that was. Doubloon. Doubloon. Hitmen work with doubloon. So John Wick is tied to Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Is that what we're? That is exactly. <laughs> that is that is that's canon. That's canon. So. Okay, Tommy. Look like a ship cannon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Tommy. Yes, me. Um. I, I don't know like what my favorite movie of 2014 was because there were a lot of really good mm-hmm. movies, um, like Lego Movie. The Lego uh, Movie, yes. Oh, man, it did come out last year. Yeah. Did. 22 Jump Street. Uh, yeah. A lot of great co- yeah. like comedies that yeah, were just just all meta around. to an extent. And yeah, they and commentated. I on I, I really like that kind of comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but uh, and there were other movies that uh, I don't know if anyone else at the table watched it. I know you watched part of it with me, but. The November Man. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that one. Pierce um, Brosnan. Yeah. Uh, in a post Bond yeah. type action movie. But I, I would I would probably say my favorite would have would probably be Days of Future Past. Okay. Um, That's the X Men yeah, sequel. X, yeah, the X Men Days of Future Past, also, or also known as X Men: The Apology. Yeah. <laughs> X Men. We're sorry about the last few. Um, it, I I just I really enjoyed it because it did kind of. Uh, uh, you know, d- it was everything that an uh, X Men movie is supposed to be. Like, if you go back and rewatch X Men One and X Men or X- and X Two, you know, it's you know this ensemble cast of great actors, great characters, and you don't feel like 
the, like the bloatedness that you know uh, X Men Three or right. First Class had, Definitely. or you know even uh, what was that one Wolverine movie that Origins. came out? Just, which yeah, is yeah, weird because because you're dealing with a movie that involves time travel and probably the biggest cast of an X Men movie we've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it didn't feel bloated. No, not because at all. like characters that didn't need a lot of screen time didn't get a lot of screen time. Yeah, exactly. like uh, as cool as it was to see you know Quicksilver or like. I guess he wasn't called that in the movie, but yeah, with legal rights. Yeah. But we all knew. Yeah, but <coughs> like, like the quick, <laughs> the Quicksilver character. Yes. Uh, he the was in fast it. gray. Yeah, the fast gray kid. <laughs> he he was in it for like you know five ten minutes, and then he had his moment, yeah. and then and moved on. Probably one of the favorite moments of a lot of people in yeah. the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he he wasn't called for in mm-hmm. all of the movies, so he wasn't used in all the movies. Whereas like with you know X Men three. Uh, actually, are we allowed to talk about that? I mean, well, technically, it doesn't exist. Yeah, anymore. yeah, but okay. In X Men Three, they had you know they introduced a lot of new mutants, mm-hmm. and a lot of them were in the story for no reason. Yeah, like you know, Angel. Angel was supposed to be the backbone of that film, and they screwed it up. And until they write that with Ben Foster in the part, I will not watch these X Men movies. <laughs> Just he, saying that he, I have not seen this because <laughs> Ben Foster was screwed by the X Men movies. Great actor, could have killed the actual role had he actually been given a role. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, well, I, I mean, I, I'm not saying Angel is you know a bad uh, mutant sure. or, or character, but yeah, he his, was. His he whole was, arc was pointless to that film. I think yeah. really the biggest the biggest key to the whole thing I think is just the fact that they got Brian Singer back. Yeah. Because he understands, he created that film universe, and he just understands those characters really well, and I think. I mean, that was that was the key, you know. These other guys, you know, they Matthew Vaughn did did a decent thing with the X Men Origins movie, Whoa, but what? he but tried the the X Men First Class movie. Oh, I was about not, to say, not the not the saying anything you, positive yeah, about not, Wolverine Origins. No, 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 yeah, no, no, you no, gotta no. you gotta be very careful throwing Excuse the word me. Origins and X Men around yes, together. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, I liked the Wolverine. It was, no, that was okay. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. Okay. That so was third, almost two like, thirds of the movie we're was sorry good. for that. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. Two yeah. thirds of that movie was good. It was the it was the third yeah, act. The third that, act, yeah. So my, uh, my only real problem with the Days of Future Past is that it's technically yet another Wolverine origin story that we. I feel like a lot more of the movie could have been focused more on other events going on yeah. rather than what was Wolverine doing during this time but the good thing but what was beneficial to having Wolverine and the way they used him was we're tying this to the future you know we're using him and he's a character that we know we understand and we could connect immediately back and use him go back in time yeah. everything was logically thought out you know even though the comics go a different way with using Kitty Pride to go back to uh, the past to, to inform yeah. everyone but um and the way that you know the ending kind of restructures everything, it's it's almost like you know you kind of have to involve Wolverine a bit. So. Uh, and, and I mean, to be fair, in the comics themselves, like Wolverine's past is always a big issue. Like, well, uh, yeah, because he's, he's present been, for everything. Well, he's alive during it. Yeah, but they also they always like retcon this, retcon that. They'll say, oh, this happened, but it didn't take as long as it did. Or, yeah. You know, so I mean, of course, they're going to have like a. Hundred origins for Wolverine in the movies because yeah. he has them in the comic books. Too. I know. It's did just, they did they retcon that Sabretooth's not his brother? They didn't go back that far. Uh, they they didn't readdress it because they should fix that. Yeah. <laughs> Te- technically, technically everything from X Men Origins up to the point of what the Vietnam War still technically exists in the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. But in, even X Men One and Two don't technically exist in the same yeah, way. Yeah, like technically, well, yeah, right, because X Two was a good movie. Yeah, X Two yeah. was a good movie. Yeah, but they, they don't. I, I don't see how they would have happened because did Wolverine ever get his adamantium skeleton? I mean, we don't know. Yeah. Like it's supposed to be addressed in the next film. Well, it, 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 we're going off on a big tangent on this, but yeah, uh, I would say probably X Men: uh, cool, Days of cool, Future cool. Past was my favorite of 2014. Yeah, cool, cool. Nick, do you do you want to? Well, you know. Just to kind of re as I'm leading up to my answer, the you know we ha- I felt like 2014 was an underrated year in film to an extent. There was a lot of expectation, and some of them didn't meet that expectation. There's quite a few, which we could which we'll get to in a second. 
But you know, I felt like there were spurts of quality going on. In the beginning year, you know, you had the Lego movie, you had 22 Jump Street, yeah. and then, you know, right at the beginning of summer, you had yeah. X-Men, you had mm -hmm. Captain America, which, again, he proves to be the most... You know the most underrated of the Dick group. Forgot to mention Take Five the movie and in the spring. There, there's this indie movie Take Five. The, I don't know, I don't know. It was okay. Um, <laughs> but you, the movies that I really connected with and enjoyed were a lot of the fall movies. Like these, it was the pre-Oscar bait kind of movies. Um, things like uh, Fury, I really thought was an interesting movie. I enjoyed uh, Interstellar as well. Interstellar, while not being perfect, there were a lot of issues with it I, it was still one of those movies that makes you think it was really long that was my issue and it was really yeah you just you're constantly like thinking about all the different I, themes and I stuff Chris I like we had a really good. steady movie <laughs> until we you know what I'm talking about hit that point there's a point he yes. steals so people's lives for <laughs> portion but I think the movie that I really thought about that was just you know well put together from beginning and structured well it also had those same elements where I was still thinking about it you know weeks later and I don't, I don't think I'm, I think I'm the only one that's watched it was uh, Gone Girl. And the reason I choose that, you know, it's a Fincher movie. I, I, I enjoy a lot of Fincher's work. You know, we talked about Seven. Fight Club <laughs> is, a, is a big one that everybody loves. But the thing about Gone Girl, and I never read the book. I'm not a big book reader. But <laughs> it, it was one of those where even though I, I was not able to guess what was going on while I was watching it. And I enjoy being left, being taken on a ride where I'm not able to guess everything that's going on. And so, but even just from the story structure, from the way that the twist came and, and went, it was really well, the momentum of the film. It didn't feel overtly long, like, you know, like an interstellar kind of tended to be. And then, you know, the performances. Uh, ben Affleck, you know, who's had a bit of a... Uh, not so great <laughs> acting career. Oh, I'm point. sorry. There was a point... <laughs> You know, he had to build them way up, and he's done that, you know, with his roles patch. in the town. And yeah, rough patch. Thank okay, you. Okay, so uh, I a mean, little rough patch. What? But Daredevil and Jersey uh, Girl are the only two. Gili. <laughs> anyway. <Yeah, well>, Touche. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> but. Well, hold on. So Ben Affleck's getting a lot of. No, he's not. He's really not getting a lot. But I felt like because all I've heard about is his penis well, in this movie. Like that's all. Like which was not when, something his, I really I focused on. His penis was, was in the movie, and that's all I read about Gone Girl. Like uh, I haven't heard it's a good movie. It's a bad movie. Like anyone did great. I just heard but, Ben Affleck's penis is in it, and to a lesser extent, Neil Patrick Harris's penis is in it. Nick is trying to repress all those memories <laughs> and what he felt during those scenes. <laughs> but what it really felt like to me, it really felt like an edgy, modern uh, Hitchcock movie. That's really how it felt. And I think a lot of that had to do with uh, the leading actress in the movie. She felt like a Hitchcock leading lady. Um, I cannot think of her name for the life of me at the moment. I'll look her... Roseman, Roseman Pike. She... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was... I've, you know, I've, seen, I've seen her in lots of movies, a Bond movie, but she never really stood out to me. And in this movie, she plays... A character you you really I, without giving anything really away is a, a very memorable character a very interesting role and I think she's getting you know I think she's Golden Globe nominated and things so I'm hoping she'll get some attention at least for it because I feel like Gone Girl came too early in the whole Oscar thing and then so now it's not getting as much hype as all these indie movies that have come out but it it really has a lot to say about you know modern relationships and modern marriage and stuff like that. There's just a lot of interesting themes that it jumps on, and it, it really keeps you invested the whole way through. And uh, an interesting sporting actor, Tyler Perry, not not really? being yeah, he did a really good job. He he, he was a lawyer. And, it up. He didn't Medea out, so he. Oh, where to go? I'll go. <laughs> And Isaac has ah, ruined. Cost the, the cost. <laughs> Nick, Nick, you, start it over. The podcast is going to be started. Nick, over. Do you want to call him Mulligan and let me, think like Twenty Two Jump Street is your favorite film you, now? You don't, no. want, you don't <laughs> want Medea impressions? No, 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 not not no, that no. one. No. Not no. what was wrong with it? Uh, uh, Ever <laughs> brother's black, so it's okay. It's, it's a, you can't see him. Oh, oh I get. Oh, anyway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> my bad. So yeah, Gone Girl is definitely my pick for the movie of the year. 
But since we've all kind of discussed our movies of the year, you know, a lot of these are big budget movies. They're movies that a lot of people went to see. A lot of people, uh, the bud, they're the top ten uh, box office draws. But you know, right now we're gearing towards uh, movies that are heading towards Oscar season stuff, like the Golden Globes are tonight. Um, Depending on when you're listening to this. Right, depending on when you're listening. (laughs) Golden Globes, what are those? They're uh, awards uh, for TV. and The the pre uh, going home to the Oscars? Yeah. I I, I know what they are. I was being facetious. (laughs) It's like Uh how little, you know, we actually Uh, care about the Golden Globes. But the thing about it is just that there's a trend in Hollywood right now where, you know, the only things that are really being taken seriously for those big awards that come Oscar season are these indie movies that don't come out until now. Like, and, and at least... last in, minute releases. Yeah, until, yeah, at least until we can actually watch them. And I think part of that is a political strategy, you know, just so people are thinking about them right now as the nominations come out. But mm-hmm. it's, it's become, redi- to a point, kind of ridiculous because we sit here and we look at these movies and very, very well, most of them could be really good. It's just that none of us have seen them and they're not these widely distributed movies. And so it kind of becomes frustrating when the reader gets nominated but the Dark Knight doesn't. And which is an argument. It was a dark yeah. dark dark year. No so. pun intended. But I just wanted to kind of open up that discussion cuz I know everybody has kind of the same thoughts and some different views on them, but whoever wants to jump in, uh, uh, Taryn, if you want to go first. Like I have a whole issue with just like a film academy or any sort of you know, group that doesn't act- actively make movies gets to be the judge on what is a good movie and not. It's like a governing body. Yeah, it's like I like. What are these people's criteria for being able to judge and make this so-called list? Not to mention having a list on it in of itself of what constitute as a good Oscar-winning movie. I feel kind of like hinders artistic creativity anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just like one of those things, like. I feel like with all of these sort of like it being Oscar movie season of yeah. oh these are the films that are coming out that are going to be nominated for Oscars I feel it's also kind of a tactic not only in a sort of like oh this will help you think about what movies are Oscar material yeah. but at the same time it's like what if someone's just really trying to get a bad artistic movie under the radar and make it Oscar worthy right like it's like I'm sorry but I was looking th- like I I was looking through Oscar-nominated films over the last few decades, and going back into the uh, 90s and even the early 2000s, those are like, yeah, that's like the nominations for Best Picture are movies I want to see or have seen. Over the last like five, seven years, it's all been films like, I don't know half of these, and I don't care to watch half of these. The only reason I would ever have potentially watched these was because they were nominated for an Oscar, and that's it. Yeah. Definitely, it's definitely one of those where it's they're just feeding off of Oscar season, and what's sad about that is that it almost neglects the rest of the year. You know, there are movies, you know, January and February after all the Oscar movies come out is is seen a lot as kind of the black hole of film time. Unload whatever you got left yeah. over. Studios are unloading at this point. And, s- yeah. and slowly, March is even being considered part of you know pre uh, summer blockbuster season. Yeah, and then you get the end of you know, it, now it's stretching to August, but then you have the you know those early fall movies, and the problem with them is that they are out so early, and everybody really likes them, but then they're forgotten and they're lost in the shuffle because of those art house movies that are getting pushed in December and early January to be part of the Oscar nominations, and it's a very uh, short term memory problem yeah. that the Oscars have. Because I don't think over the last few years that there has even been a summer blockbuster film. Even in the running. Avatar, but Avatar came out in December again. Let's push this right here. James Cameron yeah. knows what he's doing, um, and then but it did it didn't win no. by any means, but it got a lot of nominations. I think Lord of the Rings trilogy movies were like the last that was like, probably considered yeah. like the early two thousand were considered the last big budget mm-hmm. like yeah everyone saw this and we're gonna recognize it kind yeah of thing mm-hmm. which I mean rightfully deserved because I mean this is a discussion we can all have because I just I feel like it's definitely in the top three of you know, best trilogies of all time. But, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> oh, but which, uh, dang it, Corey. <laughs> we can have a discussion about that another time. But, Corey, what, what are your thoughts on, on the whole Oscar season thing? 
it's 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 frustrating. I've I've been out smoking about it for years because it just it's just this time of year it gets super annoying because you do. I hate Benedict Cumberpatch more than anyone in the world oh, God. because he's becoming that. Because you do that after so long, these actors start saying, "I will only do stuff that's like, if it's gonna give me an Oscar." You say that, but he was in Star Trek. Ah! Yeah, he was. He no, was that's the thing, though. They they do these things. You do have these guys. These are really pretentious actors, but then they take fun roles that someone might have had more fun with. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Again, it's like Cumberpatch is just for me has entered that I'm a prestigious, serious actor. I don't want to be bothered with. But at the si- but then he's got to be my Doctor Strange. F that. <laughs> like F that. I don't want you, Benedict Cumberpatch. Go, <laughs> go, go be in some stupid art house movie that gets released in December, January every year, so you can get your little Oscar nom. Well, you know who I didn't want as my uh, Incredible Hulk, Edward Norton, because he is just as pretentious and just as much of a d bag as you say. You know, uh, but, it, be, but, but, but I, it's okay now because we have Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, they fixed it. <laughs> Right, so stop your bitching about <laughs> when they fix Duncan. this and recast <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. I'll stop. Who who was your choice for Doctor Strange? Uh, anyone. I, I, I you know in Ethan to an Hawk. extent, um, you know Joaquin's not much better in terms of he's kind of an Oscar bait actor as well. Because I know we had talked about like Johnny um, Depp, even though he's older and he's been overhyped a lot. He's it's like you he know, would have been good. He's just the right age for yeah. it. But I think that. I think they were concerned about backlash there yeah. because he's so, he's he's immersed himself in Disney so bad right. over the last decade. Mm-hmm. He's almost his production company like now is part of Disney. Yeah, you know? it's it's just just one of those where it, it was a good fit, but you know his his star is not as bright as it might have been in everyone's eyes. I so. you know I'm a pretty big Johnny Depp mark. I like Johnny Depp a lot, but I think that's actually a role that he would have been perfect for because it's just. It's Doctor Strange, and he's mm-hmm. like the weirdest dude yeah. in Hollywood. Right. So out there, and I think, and the same thing. I think Joaquin is just equally weird and strange, and it's a good role for him. Yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. No, you're just some uptight English dude. That's you know, <laughs> you know who would have been good. Uh, the guy that uh, he was the the glorified Nazi in uh, Inglorious Bastards, Daniel Bruhl, and okay. he's in Rush recently with. Yeah. Uh, uh, that would have been a good casting okay. choice for. Uh, Interesting. Um, okay. Uh, it was, was a Oscar Benedict Cumberbatch year. in the yeah. Wiki Wings movie. Yeah. So I think that would have been a good He's one. actually tied up to be a villain in the new Captain America movie. Fantastic. So okay. he's, um, at least he's getting the push. Because I like so. he's he's a really talented dude. I like him. Um but and and that's my other thing, is in and, and that's a whole different tangent. But like with the Oscars, <laughs> like it's uh it is frustrating. It's become a bad trend and I think we didn't and I think it had been kinda leaning that way. I think every year it's kind of, it went kind of like the Grammys where you had like for best album you had like four albums everyone heard of, knew of, then they had this one that like no one knew, and mm-hmm. that one's one every year. Yeah, they're like, yeah, right. they're right, you like all these albums, but this one wins, you know, because it's the <laughs> Grammys and they had to be jerks about it and like be hipsters about it. And uh, so, hmm. I think I think that it kind of did the same thing. There was probably always movies that we saw like, in the best picture category that we didn't know, but. It was rare for them to win. I mean, yeah. they definitely got, and they might have brought like some light on a movie we hadn't seen, which was which was cool. But now, like I think two thousand eight or two thousand nine, I guess would have actually been the year that they did the Oscars for it. But uh, it shed a lot of light on things. It, you know, you had that two thousand eight was the year the superhero movie stepped in and, and said, said like we're here. we're going to be noticed because yeah. you had Dark Knight and Iron Man come out, mm-hmm. which between them made. All way m- way more than a billion, like made yeah. all the money. Didn't, like, yeah. <laughs> didn't Rise of the Silver Surfer came out the same year? <laughs> I, I don't think maybe. so. I think that was way prior to 2000. I'm not sure, but I, I don't know. I think it was. I think it was 2008. <laughs> Tommy, uh, shut your whore mouth. <laughs> I, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up real okay. quick. Well, either way, you had Iron Man and Dark Knight. Two completely come out. different superhero movies, but both <laughs> of excellent made quality. tons of money, yeah. and, and everyone money. saw them, and everyone said they were fantastic. And it was 2007. 2007. Okay, okay. So okay. there, yeah. the year before. Yeah, right. the, the, the last bad year. But if you really want to ar- talk about you know, if the chances of a superhero movie actually being nominated you know 
I honestly feel like Dark Knight was their only op- opportunity. That's, that's my thing. Is the Academy now actually has this reputation like that? They're like, we're not going to recognize certain genres of films. Right. It's been horror films horror for films. years. Horror films. You'll never like aside from Silence of the Lambs, which I call bullcrap. That's a horror film. Yeah. Because everybody was like, oh, it's a horror film one one year, and those times they cleaned up. I was like, that's like a thriller. That's a yeah, dramatic it's, thriller. It's not a it's horror a film. Oh. You know. We're thinking, I'm thinking like The Shining and things like that. What was it 2012 that the Avengers came out or something like yes. that? Uh, yeah, that yeah. year, Cabin in the Woods was the best movie I saw that year. Because Cabin in the Woods was a solid, sol- it was clever, it was well written, superbly casted, well acted, and everything was great about Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. It was yeah. a refreshing film at, like after years of the same crap of just reboots and unoriginal ideas right. and then superheroes owning everything. Cabin in the Woods comes out, but it's released in February because... You can't even release horror movies in Halloween anymore no, because no. they can't compete with that's Oscar baiting starting. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, we can't, you know, and then you also... Or they just have the 10th sequel of uh, the Saw movies yeah. or yeah. what's yeah. now it's, the... It's the throwaway horror they don't, movie. Yeah, yeah, they can't even compete anymore. They do like August and February. It's like horror films now. They yeah. do Paranormal activity months. movies now. Yeah. I mean, it's... Mm-hmm. It's just kind of they find something and now they're like yeah. every year we're gonna put one out and it's gonna yeah, be on Halloween. If you're lucky, you put it in August and you hope and pray enough people see it to get you close to October. Yeah. And like, you know, like I said before, we were talking about this. Like, I read an article recently where they like in the '70s, like seven out of the ten Best Picture winners of the '70s were like, in the top 50 grossing films of the '70s. Like back then, your box office, like domestic box office number, kind of mattered. Yeah. Like they kind of take that in consideration and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now, given this year, if we were to go by that, it would be Transformers, and that's a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. idea. It's it's yeah. it's the thank you, I guess, China. Yeah. Everyone in China saw that movie, so they were all for it. But your biggest U.S. domestic box was Guardians of the Galaxy, and I think to a degree, you have to recognize that. Like, that is a not. solid yeah. film, and you have to go like, Everyone saw this. Well, they should at least they recognize played in theaters the for four months. Right. Yeah. yeah, you know, they played that in theaters forever because people were still seeing it for mm-hmm. so long. Yeah. Not to mention, I mean, for a movie that was so no one knew what to expect going into it. Right. I mean, even the weekends before this movie came out, people were like, "What in the world is this movie going to be about?" There's a tree and a raccoon and it's <laughs> space. I mean, it sounds like the opening to a really bad joke. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, they did. They took a weird D-list superhero, so they don't even. Ha- they can't even claim. Well, they have a built-in fan base. No, no. I I don't know who if it's, there was. This so. built-in <laughs> fan base was about forty people across the country. Yeah. That what? Rem- what? Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, that remembered the that remembered the comic from what the seventies, the eighties, the, the late eighties, early nineties. Okay. I remember so the comic. Was, okay. Then. So I'm just saying. I think like, and I'm not even a huge fan of that film, but I still think like. It needs to be up for consideration. Like, yeah. like they don't need to just go. Oh, I made a lot of money with a superhero movie, but look over here, Benedict Cumberpatch is making Imitation Game, and it's like thought provoking and dramatic. Who cares? I'm not going to see it. Why? For one, I'd have to drive two hours to a select theater to see it right now. It's definitely even like Imitation Game. It's like I don't even know what it's have, about. I have no idea what it's, it's about. I have. I, I know it has something to do with World War Two and. It's, it's like bombs decoding something yeah. bombs but something. it's definitely just being played up based on the fact that fixed. I, I want to say there was a movie about bombs there's a great performance by so and so and there's a great performance by so and so Oscar nominated or Golden Globe nominated this and yada yada that and I mean, what is even the Oscar list because it's the imitation they game well, they, they haven't they announced, announced it yet announced it'll it. be a lot of people go well, I mean, the Golden Globes well I mean I've been going off of people like I follow a lot of celebrities on Twitter and they're starting to get the reviewers movies yeah. and I know like Imitation Game is one that almost all of them are getting alongside whatever the movie about Stephen Hawking was this uh, year The oh. Theory of Everything yeah. yeah Eddie Redmayne yeah and I think Boyhood is also <clears throat> in that <throat> package of and it's a 2 hour and 45 minute movie that people only care about because of how it was made yeah. As far as I can tell, it's not even that great of a movie. It's just really? everybody's like, ooh, it took them 12 years to film it, and it's yeah. just one kid, and it's, yeah, it, that's neat, and that's cool, but, like... And is the movie good? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Just, is the movie fantastic? Yeah. I, know, I know that the feeling to this movie I'm about to uh, talk about... Are we going to punch you? Maybe. Um, <laughs> I mean, if we're going off, like, oh, this movie took so long to make... Frozen should have won everything last year because it technically took Disney 73 years to make. (laughs) Elaborate on that a little bit. Walt Disney was originally wanting to make the movie The Ice Queen. Okay. Yes. Yes, I know this. But 
he never got like he could never figure out the right way to make it like okay. he, it never really got out of a product or a pre-production stage it wasn't until very recently that they felt like that they could actually bring it to life the way that he envisioned it they were bringing back art from the movie drawn by Walt Disney hmm. to put in the film. Interesting. So, I mean, yeah, if, we're, yeah. if we're going on like, oh, well, this needs to be like based on like how long it took them or how artistic it is. Frozen has a lot of cred in that department, but I feel like it also suffered from the fact of, oh, everyone and their mom saw it 13 times. And they're and singing they saw it. Let It Go 50 million times more. Okay, we can talk about how overdone soundtracks just, are at a I later just date. I the, the record to be shown I have not seen Frozen. There's a secret <laughs> message within the song, Let It Go. By our movie. Isaac, what, 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 this, <laughs> okay. I think it might be a good But topic. anyway, Isaac, do you have any uh, quick thoughts on the whole Oscar season? I'm not super knowledgeable on it, but... Okay. I have to agree with Taryn about how it's this like group of people. In quick the thoughts, academy. quick thoughts. Come it's on, come on, come on. Group of people <laughs> in the academy that no one knows who they are and like what they're. I, I didn't. What? Go ahead, keep going. I guess you're not taking me seriously. No, just, we're, we're checking the time. We're okay? all checking. Oh, the oh okay. <laughs> but in case you but yeah, it's been basically the same thing that Taryn is saying. It, it's it's like, but I don't think we could have like just people vote because not everyone has a good artistic Since Transformers opinion. would win. Exactly. Twilight would have It'd won an Oscar if it was People's Choice right Awards. The Fast and the Furious would win every other It year. needs to balance out. It's it, And it, maybe it'll come with time and people when people age or things. But <laughs> when we become the Academy. Right. And when, when, young, when a younger generation moves up. And that's just the way it is with, you know, different th- views on politics and you know, other types of things in the world. I think it's just a matter of time, and it's just a phase that Hollywood is going through to be hipsters right now. Yeah. So, but, um, Tommy, do you have any more final comments? No, everything I feel has already been said. I okay. mean, you know, the Oscars are, you know, overblown paperweights. I mean, you shouldn't measure the success of a movie by a little statue that you get, but yeah. by how much people enjoy it and what kind of staying power it has. And then give it a statue. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like, you know, I could watch, you know, something like The Wizard of Oz. I mean, it's an overblown movie. and you know, Which like, it lost. People, people, yeah, people get sick of hearing about it, but, you know, that's a movie that anyone can watch at any time, and it's a good movie. Didn't win an Oscar, right. but, you know, I care more about good it movie. than... You know, yeah. what, what one... 12 Years a Slave. Yeah. I mean, I don't see myself re-watching 12 Years a Slave. Right. I see myself watching, oh, yeah, I'll probably watch, you know, Wizard of Oz. I'll watch Die year. Hard I, a million I, times. I, yeah. I saw it last night. Wizard of Oz was nominated for Best Picture, but it lost to Gone with the Wind. Also a good uh, film. Yes. I mean, I can understand film, that so. decision. You know, yeah, they're both solid films. Yeah, one deserved to win. So. I would have said Wizard of Oz is gone. It's logical. I would, I, would half have, versus I would say, five. you know, <laughs> 60, 80 years in the future, yeah, it has more staying power than Gone with the Wind has, but... It's really hard for me to have a day where I'm like, I'm going to watch Gone with the Wind, because I don't have <laughs> a whole day to just, like, devote to Gone with the Wind. <laughs> that, that's, that's why you <laughs> break the it same up. motivation. <laughs> like, so, Wizard of Oz, I can pop that in and enjoy yeah. and go yeah. on the ride, but, like, yeah, Gone with the Wind, it's, you got to kind of, like, I got to plan that out, like, in a weekend. <laughs> Like I gotta <laughs> check my schedule. Um, I don't know. It's 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 rough. The Oscars are, okay. and and for the record, it's not like we're just a bunch of nerds like demanding our superhero. Films. Captain America but, deserves to be nominated. Yeah, like, I mean, by, by no means does Captain America glasses. three deserve an Oscar nomination. It's just we don't like the trend where it doesn't seem like if a movie doesn't get released in these last three months, mm-hmm. like they don't consider it anymore. Exactly. It's like they told everyone. Put your Oscar movies here so we don't have to really go to the movies the rest yeah. of the time. Like, because we're not going to cool go watch Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill. Yeah. You know, which, yeah. by, for the record, that movie just was unnecessary. Um, if you have to make no, a movie that makes fun of the fact I that like it's an unnecessary movie, better. just don't make it. Um, but, because there are plenty of movies that that got nominated for Oscars that I would have known about if they hadn't been. Right. That I watched and enjoyed. Like, The Wrestler was one. Yeah. Mickey Rourke. Yes. I watched that, and I'm, I'm a huge wrestling fan, but and it, I wouldn't have known about it no. if it hadn't gotten nominated. And that's where it just needs to be balanced out. It needs to, you know, here's the movies that, you know, were successful, but they were also good movies. It's yeah. not just based off of money. It's not just based off of, um, oh, well, they did this, this, and this, and they filmed it for 32 years with one guy in a room locked in there for five hours with nothing but a toothbrush. But, um, oh, I saw so that movie. But there was, you know, and... Meh. 
And that, but that's the thing. It's like that's where they're leaning right now, and the pendulum just keeps going. Has gone the other, completely swung the other way, and they just need to go in the middle and find that average where you can go. Here's a lot of quality big budget movies, and then here's some movies that you probably didn't see, but they're just as excellent. And that's where that's the benefit of the Oscars is that it opens up movies like that for people, and it puts the microscope on them as well as the big movies, so you can say. Oh, well, I didn't know that movie exists. That looks interesting. Let me yeah. watch that. Well, yeah, like uh, Inside Lewin Davis last mm-hmm. year. Had never heard of it. Ne- I mean, and, and until I heard that it was up for, was it up for Best, best Picture? It was, it, I believe it was. It had been nominated for several awards. Yeah, I, I said, okay, well, I mean, I like the Coens, you yeah. know, so, you know, why not go ahead and give this a shot? Mm-hmm. And I wasn't disappointed. Right. I didn't think it needed to win, which no. it did But it was a good movie. But it was good, and so. I enjoyed it. So, yeah, I definitely see that, it, you know. There needs to be a sweet spot where, yeah. Well, you know, and you can even go in as far as to say like biopics. Mm-hmm. Those are always those are always up for Oscars. Yeah, and that's a weird thing to me because it's like someone didn't have to really write this. Yeah, this was pre-written. I feel like this, this is an art separated. form. This is movies. If it, like yeah. you know, like it's like that should go into consideration. Yeah. What, what were you saying? I was saying they should be like separated, like not even just a complete category. Should, best yeah. biopic. Yeah. I think they would be because it, it, it's because you know you had Wolf of Wall Street that's a book already written Twelve yeah. Years Today already like an autobiography mm-hmm. memoir written Lincoln Walk the Line all these movies that are go just down like the list, really. Selma yeah. that's gonna again I don't even know if it's out but it's already saying hey it's gonna win a ton yeah and I have not seen it but I've read a lot about because I wanted to see it because I'm a huge Michael Keaton mark like a huge fan of Michael Keaton yeah but it upsets me that he was a part of a movie that essentially they're kind of making fun of Hollywood and its obsession with superheroes. Yeah. Because it seemed like the whole theme, from what I can tell, of Birdman, which is, and I hope Michael Keaton wins an Oscar all day just because he's Michael Keaton. I'm, I'll be biased right now, <laughs> enjoying this horrible, Corey horrible Corey has thrown fad. his hat into the ring. I, I agree with Corey. <laughs> <actually>. <laughs> Michael Keaton deserves a real Oscar. <laughs> if, it, if he had to lower himself to being in some weird artsy movie, then that sucks. Because next year he's going to be in some God or a King Kong prequel, apparently. Yeah. yeah. So... He's going right back to Bible. <laughs> he's just trying to get his Oscar. I'm all for it, Michael. He knew what he had to do. Um, and I'm glad he's back in acting, like, you know, more often. But apparently the whole theme of that whole movie is just like, and it's a line, is apparently popularity is prestigious slutty's cousin. And they're just saying, like, yeah, people just go see stupid crap superhero movies when there's these great movies and this great art no one knows about. But yeah. it's just like... Selma, I'm sure it'll be a great movie, and I'm sure I'll watch it, and it'll be inspiring, and it'll be cool, because it it's fun to capture these stories that were from, you know, different times on film and watch them and, and kind of, you know, relive them or live them out in a way, but at the same time, you do have movies that someone actually had to write and come up with and be creative mm-hmm, versus yeah. I had to read and research some history and, and film it and cast it. You know, yeah. I think one to more of the artistic... Uh, bone than the other one essentially yeah. okay. so it, I always think that's kind of weird yeah. it's, it'll go ahead it, it's funny that you know art films like you know these biopics and stuff they consider themselves as artistic but they are not being artistic they are being historical and factual yeah. whereas movies that are not labeled as art picks you know they have it, to is go creative. Creative. it is a yeah. creation creative process to create art and mm-hmm. it's it's just you know the names are flipped on them. Yeah, it's it's just this weird of like, what is art? And it, the answer should be all of it. All of it, to an extent, is art because you're having to create something. But there is one that takes more creation than the other. I think that has to be recognized. And it's just like, it's been abandoned for the last few years. Mm-hmm. It, it's interesting because you have like Selma, Walk the Line, mm-hmm. things like that. History. That's what it is. History. Yeah. You take history and you're capturing it in an art form, and that's cool. Yes. But Guardians of the Galaxy, Dark Knight, Iron Man, that actually comes from an art form. Yeah. Like that actually comes from co- which is a form of art. So we had to draw, create, right? This mm-hmm. art, and they said, well, now we're going to put on a different art form. So it's right. just weird. Yeah. But you know, the Academy's going to always just kind of shun comics, you right. know, comic movies. Yeah. It'll. De- I think in the next couple of weeks, we'll definitely be able to sit down and have a discussion about once the Oscar nominees come out and be able to kind of give our thoughts on it. And, and then we'll probably be able to actually get to watch them as well and, and we can further discuss. Because we had our, to do this last year. Yeah. We had to like start hunting down these Oscar movies to yeah, watch. Right. I, I, I refuse. So, <laughs> Tern- I'm not going to lie. Turns I think we illegally stole most of them. But because <laughs> 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 because we, <couldn't, laughs> we anyway. borrowed We're them. in small town Oklahoma 
we there's don't no select we theater within three yeah. hours of here. Yeah, there's no art house film. Yeah. Like. There's an Angelica theater like three hours away. Yeah. It's, it's sorry. Well, well, the then. internet allowed us to watch them <laughs> at home. <laughs> but anyway, so that that's kind of wrapping up the, uh, the discussion about Oscar season. And, and here in the next weeks, yeah, we'll have some di- more discussion about it as it's leading up. But before we wrap up real quick today, I just wanted to kind of discuss, we've talked about our favorite movies of 2014. I wanted to go around the table real quick just to uh, finish out and see what was everyone's, not the worst movie of 2014, because, you know, I mean, I, I think everyone has those Transformers or y- whatever on their list. But a million Ways to Die in the West. A million Ways to Die in the West. <laughs> like, no. But uh, talk about your the most the biggest disappointment to you. The biggest the film that you were looking forward to seeing and then you were like, you know, that just didn't live up to the hype. And so probably the one film that I saw this year that I was just like, This could have been better, this like I feel like I didn't get my money's worth on knowing that like I had high hopes for the film to begin with. Yeah. Edge of Tomorrow. Okay. I mean, you had this really awesome premise for I'm a time travel with rules, yeah. with parameters, and it it followed them. But the movie became so repetitive, especially within the first forty five minutes when it was supposed to capture you into it, and it didn't even s- stray from this formula of repeat, repeat, repeat until the last act. Mm-hmm. And by then, I mean I'm just so like not even invested in this film at this point that it's just sort of, and then it just. It, the twist ending just sort of like, wait, that's how this is going to end? Just, okay, fine, whatever, I get to go home now. You know, I, I think I'm in the in the minority of being one of the people that enjoyed the movie. I thought it was like a sleeper hit. I yeah. Thought, I thought it actually it, it ended was up a, getting like it was more a sleeper better hit. reviews. But this, these are our personal, um, you know, most disappointing movies, or movies that we felt didn't quite live up well, up to snuff. I just thought that was interesting. But, like, yeah. It was like this weird minority that yeah. was going to love it. Yeah. And it, when I thought, I, like, it just seemed like more people went into it just thinking, eh, and I ah. And I was kind of the same way, yeah. Like, I went in going, oh, I've heard it's actually good. I've heard it's... And it, and t- I was one of the few people that saw the trailer and went, okay, this is interesting. And then, because um, it was pitched, you know, as Groundhog Day meets, you know, name your... Uh, Tom it, Cruise, Mark. And, yeah. yeah Mission but Impossible something, meets but, Robots. But, uh, you know, I found it was a more, more humorous side of Tom Cruise that we hadn't seen very often. But at the same time, uh, I didn't have a, the biggest issue with the repetition of the days go- starting over and over again. But the thing that bugged me the most was the ending. It was it was a safe ending. They could have gone. They and could I'd, not have made a they, safer ending. They, than they did. yeah, they could have went somewhere and had an interesting sci-fi uh, story all put all together. But I think just some some uh, studio pressure or something might have caused them to change up the ending or something. But. Yeah, and that's an issue that I've noticed a lot with a lot of movies, especially big budget movies, is that you know you get those first two acts and they're great and they're quality, but then that third act it's like, and no, we don't like where you went, so you need to wrap White this House up. Down. White House Down, The Wolverine that came out last year, and and this one for example, not not terrible, but it it was very safe, I will yeah. say. And so, but Corey, uh, we've heard from Tara now. Corey, what, what was your most disappointing movie of 2014? Uh, I would honestly say 22 Jump Street. Tell me. Tell me I why. just, I, I Tommy thought it was disagrees. an unnecessary sequel. I, mean, I get it, it's Hollywood, it's business. The first one did so much mm-hmm. money. Uh, it's just a personal disappointment because I was actually like a huge fan of the 80s show and I thought the first movie was a fun, cool way. Considering that, sorry, spoilers, if you haven't seen 21 Jump Street, but the huge reveal at the end where... Uh, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, and uh, Peter DeLuise actually show up as their actual characters right. from yeah. the show, and they they have an ending and they they die. Mm-hmm. And I I thought that was cool. End it there. Like it was just almost like it was like this bookend to the great '80s show. Yeah. And then it's just like, and then Twenty Two Jump Street. They make the sequel, and it's an unnecessary sequel. And they know it was kind of an. It's almost annoying that Hollywood slaps you in the face by saying. We know it's an unnecessary sequel that we're just trying to make money on, and we're essentially it's just going to be the same movie in a different setting. That's the whole joke of the movie. 
So I didn't, I didn't necessarily like being in on all the joke. It's just like, why not do something else then? And what's what's funny, again, kind of flip side of it, that, that was part of the reason I enjoyed it. Because yeah. it was like, yes, there's no reason to make 22 Jump Street. And they're very aware of it. And that's what... <laughs> And that's what we liked because yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's that's what I that's how and, I felt. Yeah, because I, mean, I mean, there aren't that many movies that do that. Self-aware movies are very few and far between. And the ones that get away, you know, and it's you know the same kind of humor that because it's the same writers and directors from uh, uh, the Lego Movie that came out earlier this year, or last year. <laughs> now it's 2015, but uh, yeah, I just enjoyed that they weren't afraid to say you know there's no reason for this movie to exist. And it was a little more outlandish, but that's just the the nature of sequels is that they always have to be a bit bigger. They have to be a bit crazier or something. Or they, if they're a serious movie, they have to go darker. I'm, and I'm, so. I'm a little bit leery of telling this particular group that not only has a sequel for 21 and 22 Jump Street been announced, yeah. it's a crossover. Yeah. With Men in Black. With Men in Black. So that was part of that, uh, yeah, part of that Sony leak, wasn't it? Well, yeah, hold on. Is that, I feel like the Sony leak was the biggest bullcrap well, PR stunt move by Sony itself. So, I, I, I'm kind of agreeing I with I think Corey that now. most of the crap that was leaked was the biggest jokes in the world like that. There's no way anyone thinks that's a good idea. There's just no way <laughs> Channing Tatum thinks that's a good idea. The only thing that I feel like this gives credence to is that Sony actually addressed it after the leak. Mm-hmm. So it's like if it was one of those things like, well, no, you don't need to report about this because this is leaked and stolen material and like you have no... A right to know about this anyway. I feel like if it, this was just that, they w- that would have been one of the many things they would have left alone, but to actually address it after the leak kind of makes it feel like maybe they're testing the waters and seeing how well that will well, go hopefully over. Hopefully they've seen that everyone thinks that's the dumbest idea ever. <laughs> that is that is so weird and makes no sense. I, I'm kind of sad to say this. My problem with that uh, whole idea isn't the fact that it's a 22... Men in Black crossover, but that it's a twenty or that it's a Men in Black and anything crossover. <laughs> that, that's my thing. Men in Black should have ended with one. Twenty One Jump Street should have ended with one. There should not have been sequels to these five hey, films. Men in Black Two was but, good. Yeah, yeah. Was good, but, no, uh, they, they never recaptured <laughs> I like that. This. Yeah, the magic and was then, gone. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, they also bash like. Angelina Jolie and call her the biggest diva in these leaks. Yeah. And she's like the single biggest humanitarian yeah. since Bono. Yeah, but you <laughs> see, but, but I mean, there has to be something there because I mean, she has like five who African is, kids living in her house. Someone who is <laughs> like, that much of a humanitarian, you know that they've got to have some something. It's, it's maybe, like with, I don't with, know, but I just like, how can you bash Angelina and Jolie every time I see Angelina and Jolie new, she's like giving things away and like, Feeding the poor, you're like, gosh, how? Who in the world can call her like a mean spirited person? I just, it seemed to me like a giant joke, especially whenever it's sort of revolved around Seth Rogen's movie, The Interview, and half the leaks involve Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill and things. It's they involve that group of people. Yeah. So I don't know. I I I think there's a. I'm a conspiracy theorist that thinks that Sony hacks were bogus just to promote a movie, an ingenious move, by the way. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Anyways, yeah. So, so <laughs> your thoughts. Now, Isaac, what was your most disappointing movie of the year? I'd probably say that it was the Hunger Games movie, and I know that Taryn doesn't like that, but I, I haven't read any of the books or anything, but just as someone who's watched the movies, it felt kind of slow, because okay. I was expecting all this, oh, here we go, it's going to be yeah. a billion time. And I, I think, I mean, if it's just them building up to that, it's understandable. Mm-hmm. But I felt like a lot of the movie was, and I know it is all about Katniss, but they really, and, and that's who they focus on, but it feels like we're missing all the rebellion stuff, like mm-hmm. we're going around it, and it's yeah, like all yeah. this in between Katniss building up to do her part, and it's like a lot of it is like getting her to motivate the people, Yeah, and it's like they're trying to get like a good shot of her being emotional, like yeah. that's all they're trying to do, okay. and it's like... I, I think, I'd rather watch them do other stuff. I think your feelings are valid. I, I feel like with this <clears throat> movie, like the last two Hunger Games movies has always been half pre-Hunger Games, half during the games. This was a whole movie of pre-during the games. And, yeah. and it's the first half of the book, isn't it? Yeah. So, do, yeah. Do you think it has anything to do with the first two Hunger Games? You're really on board with Katniss and Jennifer Lawrence. And in this new one, all you can think about is you're a dirty, dirty woman that takes... 
200 nude photos on your phone were not on your side? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think maybe she lost some of the charm and no one wanted to I, rally behind I, her at this I, point? I honestly still like her, and it's not because yeah. of the pictures. I liked her before those. Yeah. Okay. I, she, like, <laughs> the whole, like, nude leak aside, uh, like, my problem with this film isn't the actress or anything like that. It's really that this whole book is the weakest link of the entire series, in my opinion. And it's primarily, like, as much as I'm anticipating the last movie, it's the the last half of the book is a very, like, touch-and-go, like, quality-wise. My my biggest thing about it, and I've only seen the first movie, um, but... The trend that's happening with these young adult films is, oh, it's successful. Well, let's let's make let's make sure we make sign a deal to make it a trilogy. But let's chop that third one. Yeah, in half. let's chop that third one in half so we can get all the money in the world. And or did we decide this is it was Harry Potter? Or Harry Twilight? Potter it was, is the it was Harry Potter, Potter did it. right, and, and then right after, right, it. Yeah. 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 And so I think that that's where the film probably and Isaac, from what we've discussed, it seems like that's the biggest fault of it is that it's building towards something, which in the and books we don't is. Get there. And the, and you just it gets cut off and you're like oh it's well, building to a year long wait right yeah and and that's just frustrating as a viewer because you know you want to see the story end and you know you've been you've grown up watching the Star Wars trilogy the Indiana Jones trilogy the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy the Matrix trilogy all these different the Back to the Future trilogy Pirates Four was good Lord of the Rings Shut your mouth. and then. The Star Trek trilogy. The Star Trek trilogy, even though there's like 20 of them. The, the main <laughs> trilogy. The main trilogy. But, y- you know, that's just kind of, that's kind of how the, you know, there's the story of the hero um, with no, what's Yeah, 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 the, the uh, uh, hero's quest. Yes, well, the hero's quest. And that there's, you know, there's the beginning, the middle, the end, and it's a good structure to go off. Unless there's a good reason for it to be four, unless it's designed initially as four stories or four separate entities. Hobbit, <coughs> just one book. I don't feel like it should be yeah. uh, turned into two <laughs> just for the sake of it. it. I feel like if you're going to do that route, which it's Hollywood, they're going to do whatever they feel gives them the most Bad amount man. of money. But and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're some, wrong, <laughs> Tommy. I will, I will reach over the table and slap you. But please, please don't. There's a recorder's right there. Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Matrix films, the last two, regardless of their quality, because mm-hmm. that's a whole other discussion for a whole other yes. time, but wasn't the initial plan with the Matrix sequels to release them within like four months of themselves? I'm not sure. I be- you might, I'm pretty sure you're right. I, I didn't... I'm I don't know sure. if they actually did it, but I because I thought the thought was we're releasing this one in they November, were close. and yeah. then we're going to release the next one in the summer, and then they pushed it back yeah. to the end of the year. I wouldn't mind waiting to have seen Mockingjay Part One if I knew Mockingjay Part Two was going to be three months out. Yeah, yeah. but I, it's that year long wait of like, well, it's building, it's building, it's building. Mm-hmm. A year is a long time to hold on to that excitement and anticipation for something. Yeah. Just real quick though, since there was a that a trend made by Harry Potter and Twilight to chop a th- like a the third movie into two, yeah. kind of just making everybody mad. Well, you literally watch Harry Potter's watch, case the seventh. You watch like half the story, and then you have to wait a year to finish the story. Speaking of dis, I didn't see it, but I know all about it. But speaking of disappointing movies, did Spider Man just start a trend where the second movie is just a two hour trailer? For the third movie, uh, where there's actually it doesn't really go anywhere. It just builds up and says, "But there's going to be a third one." <laughs> well, and we're going there. I think. Well, I think Sony figured out that if you do that, you may not guarantee yourself a third film. until Marvel comes talking saying we want Spider-Man back. Yeah. <laughs> so which, I guess you should have finished that movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With Disney on our side, <laughs> <laughs> we have all the money. We're willing to offer Sony. Or Disney could probably theoretically buy Sony and just get their rights back that and way. Just, and just scrap everything else. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my Spider Man now. Oh, <laughs> your lines coming together. Oh, that's girl. I can't what you're gonna do that with the Spider Man. That would technically oh. make Disney owners of Resident Evil's film franchise. <laughs> cool. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so Tommy, that's a great <laughs> idea, Taryn. <laughs> what was your most disappointing movie of 2014, Tommy? Well, uh, I ha- okay. Well, I have my most disappointing and the one that I hated the most. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, the one that I hated the most was Amazing Spider-Man Two. Got it. All right. Beginning to end, hated it. Just absolutely. Tommy is horrible. a big Spider-Man fan. Huge. Guys. I mean, yeah. like, huge. 
This this isn't you crapping on Spider Man. This is you crapping on Amazing Spider Man Two. Exactly. I mean, I love Spider Man. I have like thousands and thousands of dollars in comic books and you know toys and DVDs and everything. You know. What's the but, combination to your safe again, by the way? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, just Amazing Spider Man Two was one of the worst movies that I saw last year. Uh, but the most disappointing one was Godzilla. Okay. Just, yeah. You know, I went in thinking, awesome, great, a new Godzilla movie. It's been, you know, 14 years since the, the last great Godzilla movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in Japan just turned off this podcast. Yeah, because we have so many listeners in Japan. Uh, we have so many listeners, period. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, you know, really, it, it was, I had, like, really high expectations. It was like, great, a new Godzilla movie. Now maybe we can see a remake of Godzilla King Kong. You know, yeah. Since, you know, that since King Peter Kong Peter Jackson movie, destroyed that. Since it was such a great success. Yeah. Um, it, but it was just like, you know, there were so many characters that, you know, had nothing to do with the plot that you don't care about. Even, like, the main character. I don't even remember his name, but uh, played by... Uh, Aaron Kick Johnson. ass. Yeah, Aaron Johnson. Yeah, yeah kick ass. <laughs> and like, he was the main reason I was excited about it, because um, I like him as an actor. Yeah, I mean, I like him, but, like, his character I just did not care about at yeah, all. And he was the main character of the movie. <laughs> when you don't care about the main character, you can't really care about the right, movie. Right, yeah. yeah. And, like, his dad, like, Brian Cranston, I cared more about his character in, like, the 40 minutes he was in the movie than I did, like, the entire rest if, of the movie. If we're going to be completely honest, Kick-Ass should have died instead yeah, of, it, uh, instead of his dad. Spoilers! Gosh, I'm going to get, like, a bell. Oh, like, okay, y'all out honestly, honestly you if you like, haven't seen Godzilla it's yet, terrible. you're not going to. But, uh, uh, yeah, you what, if you haven't seen Godzilla, you can watch that movie, and you won't see Godzilla for about two hours. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. He, he's only in, like, the last 15 minutes. Yeah. And of those 15 minutes, he's in, like, maybe four. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, my God. The Korea, I hated the ending of Godzilla because it's like they, they try to throw all the science in it. And I don't even understand it that they've created these monsters that are rampaging. But so they've been around bigger, for thousands of years. This bigger giant lizard comes in and kills them. But where everyone like cheers it as he like has this like traumatic like dramatic walk back to the sea and everybody's like raising the roof like inside. <laughs> I'm like, kill it! Like, how are you? You just people are standing in wreckage and dead bodies. There's a third monster. I know it killed the other two, but why are we trusting it? It, it, it nuke that thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, it, so it, was, I, I it had, was weird. It was a cheesy ending for a movie that tried to be serious. I had really high expectations for it because you know I, I Godzilla is near to my heart, but it was bad. Yeah, it, it was just it, it was upsetting. I would watch the 98 version over the 2014 oh, yeah. version any day. Another yeah. It was a way better movie. Matthew Broderick. Yeah. I mean, exactly. That's oh, period. Fish. That's Hank Azaria. <laughs> it's a great movie. Yeah. Exactly. Another great movie. Me, I know me and Corey enjoy it, but another modern monster movie is Cloverfield. If you can get past yeah, the shake I love it. Cam, oh, you get past the shake a cam, it's a, it's a great movie. Guys, I'm I, waiting for I, why did you guys not tell me this? I've been looking for other people who like it. I still haven't seen Cloverfield. It's You'll great. Watch it. We'll watch it. I, I'm like, I've been told that. And people I just want a sequel so bad, but J.J. Abrams has gotten too big for his britches. I don't think it needs to I know that Nick still needs to give his most disappointing film, but while we're on this Cloverfield tangent, because I don't get this tangent a whole lot. Go ahead, go ahead. The best part of Cloverfield was the viral campaign. Oh my before. gosh, yes, Taryn! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're friends! Because, <laughs> yes. I mean, there was so much done to build this world before the film that it's a completely different experience if you go into it not knowing anything about oh, the viral yeah. campaign. If you go into it, you're way concerned. Your main concern is with the characters that are involved, which is very understandable, but if you know of the viral campaign and you follow the corporations and businesses that are behind the strings of this event it becomes it's like so great you it's get a whole other yeah movie. you catch on to so many other elements of the hmm. film and it's just we need to have this watching party guys okay. like I'm and we, but we have to we have to show everyone the viral campaign first before i, we, I, I have even i have the blu-ray that has it all okay good because it it does i'm i saw this in theaters with like as a girlfriend at the time and uh and i'm like i've been i've been like following all yes, this you know too. so i'm like excited about this movie and like before i overhear this dude behind me with his girlfriend and he's kind of talking about it i'm like we start geeking out <laughs> like, we're just like we're like yeah dude and it's all this stuff and like things that happen in the movie where you kind of understand it but yeah. no one else like both of him and i are like yeah like we're just jumping like yeah. i noticed and we're like high-fiving you know and stuff and 
the greatest thing I've ever witnessed is there's also these eighth graders in this movie theater that are just ruining the whole movie. Like it's the guy trying to impress all the girls. Yeah. You know, he's just talking, saying stupid stuff, and uh, we get up, and that guy, is, the, the little eighth grade boy, gets up and just to try to impress all his little eighth grade girlfriends. You know, he's just like, well, that was the dumbest movie ever. That was the biggest disappointment I have ever seen. And the guy behind me that, you know, was geeking out with me looks straight at that kid and says, that's exactly what your mother said when you were born. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, oh. all these eighth graders are just like, boom! <laughs> like, it backfired. And I, I, I fobbed him. <laughs> and it was good. So that was guy. probably one of the greatest movie theater stories I've ever seen. Nice. Aside There's, from uh, the Dark Knight uh, guy standing up and uh, telling everyone to shut up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll save that one for another time. But uh, just to wrap up, uh, for me, uh, we've all had our chance, but uh, my biggest disappointing movie was uh, the 300 sequel. And the reason why, because I really did enjoy the first one. Other people, they enjoyed it, you know, oh, because so many people died, and so many people, uh, and so much nudity. It's a good story, and so, but it's just, yeah. a, it's a, such a well, it's such a great transition from page to film of a comic book or a graphic novel, which is what it, I guess it yeah, technically yeah. is. Uh, that I've seen, and the storytelling of the first one was very, it, it had this old Hollywood kind of feel to it, yeah. you know, and but it was still so modern with the style of the fighting yeah. and stuff. It was well casted, too. Yeah, and I just felt like it was, other than Eva Green, you know, the movie was just kind of a disappointment, and it's not just because Eva Green was naked in the movie. It was because her character was the only one that had depth and you were interested in her battle. It was it was one of those few instances in the movie at the end where you're like, I'm rooting for the bad guy. I want the bad guy to win. Wasn't her character made up? <clears throat> like, it wasn't even part of the comic. I think so. Xerxes. I think like, n- like, none of that. So the most yeah. interesting part of the film adaptation of Xerxes was the made-up character. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is such a missed opportunity because you have this small story that's that they were able to make this magnificent film with visually and everything and then you have a chance to expand this universe and all this you know we can maybe we can go further into the politics and stuff but you know they just they kind of missed the mark and the the lead actor the leonidas of this movie the hero he, he felt real flat he, he was real flat and he was a little shaky on some of his choices and you're like i don't know if i like this guy like yeah. you could really say like you know i kind of can get why she, Eva Green is mad at everybody, and I can get why she's doing what she's doing. But everybody else is kind of like, everybody else is just kind of jerkish. It, it was a very disappointing film because the first one, like you said, it really appealed to a male demographic of it's super violent, super action. He's got some great speeches mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And Jar Butler, it was, it was like I said, really well casted. This one, not really horribly casted. I mean, I think it's trying to push some unknowns, put yeah. some unknowns over. A Dustin Searles look-alike. You know, yeah, yeah, Dustin Searles look Corey's, a lot like Corey's bandmate. Yeah, so. <laughs> a lot like him. Um, but, you know, the first one had Jar Butler, and that kind of, it might have been his breakout. That I was remember. His, pretty it much his breakout, It kind of put him on yeah. the map. Fast Vendor, we didn't really know at the time. Yeah, he was, he was, he was slowly it. up and coming. I think it was uh, Jar Butler's, like, action yeah. come out because he, he was, was in Phantom. Phantom and, yeah, Phantom kind of But it was like, he, it put him on the map, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So, and this one, but the thing with this is it's weird to take 300, which is, again, it's, it's actually just a really great story and a great movie that anyone can really enjoy, but it, it was <coughs> a hot, huge male demographic movie, lots mm-hmm. of violence, huge <coughs> dudes, inspired a whole workout system type right. of thing. Then they're like, we're going to make a movie where our whole demographic was like macho males about smaller guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's it's not yeah. as cool the story. Right, these guys aren't as cool. They ride boats. It's like, it's like, it's like if no one said I'm gonna make a Robin movie now. Uh, that would be an excellent uh, be, idea. But it, no, Batman's not gonna be in it. It's just gonna be Robin. It's not gonna it, be Nightwing. It's just gonna be Robin. Well, if Chris, <laughs> o, if Chris it's O'Donnell, just, we're in it. It's just, it would be an excellent movie. It's, just, it's gonna be Marlon Wayans. It's gonna be that. Oh, one. oh no, <laughs> no. Yeah, so it's that one. It's it's like we're gonna make. I don't know. It could still it could still work. <laughs> so it's falling it's, further into so the fandom. I think that was the weird one. It was it, that was what was weird for me. It's just like, and it's like the director told the guys on purpose, get buff but not as buff. Have everyone kind of go. <laughs> Man, Good guys enough. Are take a, were take huge. a couple days off. Like, yeah. it's, it's it's a weird thing. It's like and that's even, a movie. Like let's at least make them huge and like bigger than life. But it's like they actually went realistic in the weird fantasy movie. Yeah. Like. Don't be as big as the Spartans from the last one. And they get made we fun of. We have to sell you guys as like smaller. Yeah, it's, so it's just weird. Mm-hmm. 
it's weird to say, but I wanted my guys bigger. Well, <laughs> and Buffer and Euler. You could just Euler, say but they weren't. In the original 300, Leonidas took all of the big guys. Like, yeah. like we need every single last tall guy that we have. So, yeah, yeah. That, so, so the sequel is like the B team. You know, it's, it's there. That, that would make sense. Yeah, this is weird, but they didn't do a good job of like. It's, it wasn't miracle for me, you yeah. know, like the college students overcoming the odds and winning yeah. the gold medal. It still was just like you guys aren't as cool. Yeah. So it's just it's just all it was. Exactly. Well, does anybody have any other final thoughts or anything, real quick, before I wrap uh, up? Uh, food. You guys talk about we'll, we'll get to some food. Yeah, I'm a little <laughs> yeah, hungry, food. so we can go get Jack food. Jack in the box. Maybe. Maybe. Brought to you by Jack in the box. I gotta Not go. really. We actually I gotta don't go have to an adult party. Sorry. But, oh, oh, okay. Lame. An adult party. Yeah, well, wait. Are lame. When you say adult, not like a sex party. Oh, like a not fun party. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thanks for I'll tuning in with us you so this you can time. Tell that to everyone, you know? <laughs> thanks for tuning in with us. We appreciate you uh, making it this way through the uh, conversation. If you like us, uh, look below on the YouTube link and just hit the like button. Follow us on YouTube. You can follow us at uh, Take Five Media. It's all spelled out. Take Five Media, and then uh, you can follow us also on Zudi.net. That zoo, like a z- animal zoo, uh, D D E E dot net. <laughs> And that has some of our friends that also have some YouTube channels. Uh, a friend of ours, Del McLean. You can follow him at the Del McLean. He has some cool cooking shows. He has a cool uh, cocktail class where he makes different cocktails. And then uh, you can also follow our friend Dustin Curry. Uh, he has a vlog essentially where he'll talk about different topics, his you know life experiences and different things. But it's it's fun and it's funny. And he sometimes will go. Oh, do it. Oh, Pitch and yes, surprise. our our fellow Take Five member uh, Tanner. If you're wondering where he's at, he's actually in California right now. And he's uh, he's he's working on doing something as well, uh, YouTube wise. And hopefully, we'll we'll have more DSL t- details about that coming up in the next couple of weeks. But once again, thanks for listening. We hope to hear you from you guys next time. If you liked it, you disliked it, you have something to say about something somebody said, please comment below. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Drink more Ha, ha, ha.